Gonna build a mountain from a little hill. Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and we're here with Koali Zoo. And I'm freaking out because this is the first episode I am going to do. And these guys are really uh, putting me up for a challenge, and it's terrible. But let me introduce you guys first. <laughs> We have the Koali crew with Silver Red, Rudy Rankemo, and Mike Sheets. Hello, y'all. Hello. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Hi. And for those who don't know, uh, during Planet Coaster, we did a Koali Beach series collaboration with Silver Red, Rudy Rankemo, and Kiralis, and this lady. And uh, so, yeah, when we heard that Planet Zoo was coming out, we really wanted to do a new collab. But instead of Keralis, we now have the amazing Mike Sheets, who you guys all know from my Japanese macaque series. <laughs> the, you, you must have seen that one, like, <laughs> you must. So yeah, uh, in the front of this video, I already shared some cinematic shots of what both Silverette did and Mike Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. because uh, uh, these guys posted their videos on their channels. There is a playlist in the description for those who are wondering. So we add every new episode, every episode that is posted mostly weekly will be added into that playlist. I know a lot of people were asking for that in Mike Sheets and Silver, his video. So that's why I have a very long introduction to tell you guys for the, the, those who are new and the ones that are viewing and asking for a playlist or something to make it easier. There's a playlist in the description. I will also pin it in the comment section if you want to check out the first episodes and if you want to keep following this amazing series. <sighs> okay, that was the introduction. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, we really should have done that earlier. Uh, so one dead. more thing. I need I need to say one more thing. Please go and give these guys all a sub, of course, because a playlist is easy, but these guys make incredible stuff next to Planet Zoo. So, or in Planet Zoo, I should say, but also other things, of course, in Planet Coaster, but mostly Planet Zoo at this point. So yeah, if you want inspiration and well, they, those guys are all three really incredible. So definitely just sub to these guys because they are amazing and well, Oh, we're going to do a collab together, so it's going to be just really awesome. <laughs> we're kind of already doing the collab, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's another collab. There's Koali Zoo 2. <laughs> Koali Zoo 2. Oh my god, no. I can't handle more stress, guys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you doing the Koali Zoo 2 too? Okay, that's not going to work. Good. <laughs> Rudy, are you already no. going to be like this? God. <laughs> I, I have to. I, I have to. Have to. Um, to be like that. You know, people forced me to since the last comment section. So. Yes. Uh, oh, they do. What, what did they say? What did they say? <laughs> Oh, they're welcomed to the Rudy Bad Pun episode one. It was actually episode two. I made them already in episode <laughs> one, I might say. <laughs> but apart from that, I was fine. Yes, and this boy band that we have here, Rudy is the bad boy. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's part of his brand image. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> have you seen? I, I just tattooed my uh, brand avatar now. He's got one over the left eye now. Oh, <laughs> but, wow. it's facing, nice. but it's facing the other direction you cannot see. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shout out to Ricey and her fonts once again. Oh, oh yes, yeah. oh, thank so you. Good. Yeah, these fonts are really incredible. You use the same ones, right, for the micro house you did, Mike? I used or, a certain set, yeah, but it was yeah. the same creator. Yeah, but they are really amazing. Like, I can't believe that someone is able to create a font with these art shapes. And it's so thin. It's so, so good, yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's really incredible. So this is in the workshop. I saw a few people adding uh, fonts to the workshop. So yeah, definitely, if you're looking for some different fonts, definitely go and check out the workshop. I will link this one in the description if I don't forget. <laughs> but it's really incredible work and it just fits well. And for those who are wondering, we're building a reptile house. <laughs> All right. So... And um, hmm. there was this debate 
uh, in Mike's video <laughs> about whether or not we're going to build a polar bear habitat or maybe <laughs> a flamingo habitat. But I actually was like, mm, what could have possibly happened? Mm, I, I, I wasn't really a fan of the flamingo habitat because I, for my feeling, I recently did one and uh, I don't know, I just didn't feel too much for it. But I really wanted to do a polar bear <laughs> habitat. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah. Uh, I feel like Mike we're was a somewhere. little bit against it, but <laughs> <laughs> like during the way, he was like, "Well, maybe, maybe we could figure something out." And <laughs> yeah, I was, I was all did. for it. If we, I was all for it if we could do it without snow, because I just don't like the the look of the the forced snow in the game. Mm. So I'm like, I, I think we could probably do it. And then the DLC came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then the DLC dropped. Like, we had an idea. We were brainstorming and we were reading upon the polar bear and those kind of things. And we were like, okay, if we're going to do a building, then it must be something that is really able to hold the cold. Mm -hmm. So, so like, it should maybe be underground or anything. Or, like, if you have windows not being in the position of the sun and those kind of things. We were really looking into those kind of things. So we found something which was really awesome and that would have me meant that partly the habitat would have been underneath the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we saw the requirements of the polar bears <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no way I'm going to build a huge habitat underneath the ground. Like, no, that it just doesn't feel right at all. And I just didn't feel comfortable. Like, obviously, this is sandbox mode, so you can say, like, I'm going to reduce the... Uh, I'm going to lower the requirements, like, a lot. I'm not going to care because I have 100% welfare in sandbox mode or those kind of things. But, uh, like, the idea I mean, was... We have, to, we have to come to you people, and then you're going to tell us that we've done a, a horrible uh, act against nature. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, like, that was the whole reason why Mike was totally against it like no <laughs> you can't keep a polar bear in this tropical environment i was like okay 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 so then we were really figuring out like how we could do this and <laughs> the requirements like yeah i can say i make it very much smaller but then the whole idea of like we have to make it work in a tropical environment but we give them like a very small habitat is just not gonna work I just mm. and so, the more the more we did research on it, it's just like, oh yeah, these tropical zoos have held polar bears for twenty years, and they're stopping holding polar bears because it's unethical. I'm like, oh okay, <laughs> it looks like this isn't gonna happen then. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed, but then again, I build the polar bear habitat now in my franchise zoo, which I'm gonna keep very empty, and I'm just gonna decorate the viewing platform a lot in the barriers but that's gonna be it probably because it's too much work it's gonna take hours just to put down tons of rocks like i don't know I <laughs> but mean, it's, i it's, really love them i yeah, really really love how they look i i do have to say that i have not seen the other animals yet but the polar bears are stunning and the animations are incredible i love them yeah i totally agree but to be fair also i think the biggest issue is just the size because the requirements for the polar bear itself is really it's mediocre it's actually pretty easy they don't demand that many plants i mean obviously um <laughs> it's not like they're living in a forest right so it's it's quite easy because you have like such a huge mess of land and and water and well you have to have like a water filter system okay fair but the rest is like pretty straightforward it just Kind yeah, of. but if you want to put down a lot of rocks to make that pretty big flat land look a little bit interesting, then know, just putting down rocks just takes a lot of time. Yeah, and actually I can tell you because I did that and it was a huge mistake. They have the <laughs> same issue with um, the rocks as, for example, the wolves. Their hitbox on the wall, uh, on the on the rocks is just. <laughs> Let's, let's just not talk about it, okay? Mm. Let's just say that the hitbox about the rocks is uh, kind of difficult to manage and basically the moment you put a rock in, um, you lose like, I don't know, 100 square meters of land. Yeah, so, but that's with every animal. So that's just how the game works. You have yeah, no, like a, some, a traversable area and if there's a rock and the animal can't climb that rock because it's too high or yeah, whatever, exactly. they can't, but that's just how the game works. 
And yeah, the, but the, some yeah. animals can can go over them a lot more easy. That's what I'm saying. I, like the yeah, angle calculation true. is uh, definitely a bit yeah weird. But maybe it is like that. And I, I don't know if they are like not good climbers. But I was just a bit confused because they climb like ice shores and and Arctic. You know, this is why I was a bit confused. But at the end, I managed it. Just like saying only oh, saying okay. that this is like a bit uh, tricky. And if you do that on the on the scale of that habitat, well, congrats, uh, you managed to have your next week filled in. <laughs> it's, it's insane. <laughs> but yeah, that's. That's the thing indeed like i was saying in my video like i have 12 i, I had 12,000, which were like the earlier requirements and i was like yeah it's now empty but once i'm gonna start filling it with rocks then the traversable area will reduce anyway so mm -hmm. yeah it, it's gonna be reduced and i'm fine with that i'm really happy that they like made the requirements uh half as bad <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that is something I'm really happy about, but still I would, should Ring love to see it a little bit. But <laughs> can you also just right. ignore how needy the polar bears are and just give them a very small habitat and let them complain you can. to no avail? Yeah, you can. You can, you can, but for Koali Sue, Mike thought that was just not a good idea. I'm gonna blame it to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, alright. Yeah, yeah, fair so enough. I can take it, I got broad shoulders. <laughs> So you're no, see. but but you can, you can in sandbox mode, obviously you can, but for franchise mode, you need to make sure that you pay attention to their welfare because you don't have the check boxes like you have in sandbox mode. Yeah, exactly. Oh, whoa, and you do spawn protesters immediately. Like, do you spawn them in the front of the habitat, I tell ya. Like, I just, I, I just <laughs> dropped them in to see the requirements next to the size, <laughs> and it took like, I think, eight seconds, and my zoo was <laughs> filled with protesters. Is <laughs> You're like, kidding me? No, really. I was like, Is okay, that really? give me a second. Um, and yeah, well, they went away until it was done. You know, it was quickly done. Okay. But like they were there immediately. Like, hey, you got a polar what bear. What were they protesting yeah. for? Because of the size? Yeah. Yeah. Because I had some, some issues with the rocks, as I said. So the land mass was heavily dis um, oh, yeah. <laughs> decreased. But just for a moment, you know, it was not like I, I kept the game running for like 10 minutes. I was like hitting the play button, checking. Okay, and pause the game again. You know what I mean? And I did this like three times and boom, like 20 protesters were in there. Like, <laughs> That's <okay>. bad. <laughs> I wonder though, that's just a very interesting question in general. Do you know that lady? Do they have a different kind of way that the protesters, um, you know, react? So some animals might be a bit more, let's say, tricky because they are more like endangered. I was wondering that the whole time. Well, let, let's just say the amount of... Um, realism they try to put in for the polar bear which is like extreme compared to other animals uh i would not be surprised if they did added the protesters just a little bit to show people like hey exactly you know <laughs> be because... careful and it making it too small i don't know obviously but i would not be surprised if they did because they now affect the, the refunds you know for each protester you gotta get a bigger amount of oh is that really and, oh yeah, i didn't yeah. notice that yet hmm. okay yeah, that's so. very good to know <laughs> i mean it's a good system though i mean i i totally agree with that and in the past couple of weeks i never had actually an issue with the protesters i mean i had some some issues with like starvation and stuff like always but like <laughs> for a few seconds and it was fixed and that's good um yeah i'm not feeding my animals to save money it's it's fine though <laughs> <laughs> oh nice <laughs> i'm running a business yeah no i'm just kidding wow obviously. that's really bad no, I, I, I have to say, I don't have, uh, since the last update, so we're talking now on Thursday, since the last update, I don't really have any issues so far with franchise mode, which is really good. So I'm really happy with that. I had no really weird bugs or anything, so I think the biggest bugs are out, but then again, like, bugs are very personal, so there could still be people out there that have a humongous amount of issues and others don't have any issues, so yeah. That's the most strange thing, I guess, about Planet Zoo, is that some people have so many issues and some people are like, eh, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, I remember that your a... beta was like running like a charm in comparison God, to... God, remember that? It was insane. <laughs> you were telling stories to me and I was sitting there like, what game are you playing? <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh my God, I love Fortress Mode so much and I had no issues at all. And people were like, eh, you know, I have so many issues. And I was like, you just don't know how to play this game. <laughs> Until it was confirmed there were issues. But it turned <laughs> out now, right now, yeah, that there are just a lot of personal <laughs> issues. Hey, 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 the lady, hey, the lady. Yeah. Important alert re requires attention. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Oh yeah, that ah oh, is that. So, I'm so sorry. Like for a long time, I was like, ah, oh, what do I do with this? And then I rem remembered that in really his stream, I saw him turning off this alert. <laughs> like that was the <laughs> first was, thing like, I did. But like after hours, I had no idea. I totally forgot about it. Like, but here's the underwater viewing, by the way, Mike. Cool. You were like, where is this? Is this a different building? <laughs> I couldn't quite tell because the outside yeah. was all like masonry and then the inside <laughs> is all... Uh, yeah, but that's the trick. Like, my outside building is like really trying to keep up with you guys, your creativity. Mm -hmm. And then in the inside of the building, I'm free to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn, no. <laughs> no, but it's really, you were like, well, it looks so different. But that's the whole intention. Like, this is okay. just... A, a, a separate part. I, I don't know if you will see it during the video, but you will definitely see it when the video goes up because it's not completely finished yet. I still have to do mm -hmm. some finishing up uh, tomorrow, uh, I hope. It's still not, it's not gonna be finished because it's just too big. So we only have the underwater viewing for the Gary right now mm -hmm. and the entrance building, but I'm not really sure yet. I wanna have exhibits in the entrance building, but I'm not completely sure how I want to do it, so I might get back to that. You will, guys, will see a little bit in this speed build to it. Uh, but yeah, these, th this one, and then on the other side will be probably for the now monitor or maybe the saltwater crocodile, and uh, that will be basically the same idea. But you don't really have the feeling that you're in a completely different. How you say that? Like it, it fits, even though it's totally completely different. Like okay. there is a there is a, a gate going through this area, going down from the sloped stairs. No, it's not a stairs. <laughs> it's no path system. And uh, I, I think for me, it really doesn't bother me at all. It's just something I really wanted to do. It's like a lowered building, and on the outside, it still looks like. It's just all of the same building, even though I didn't do that much detail. Because in the end, I will do a lot of like green trees and stuff around it. Mm -hmm. So what you normally see in oh, I like uh, that. real time zoos is that you have, if you look at Google Maps, you see things you will never see when you go to a zoo. And sometimes I really feel like they, they just stick a building right against some other building like mm. if you get what i mean like it's super ugly it can look hideous and this is kind of a building that is like stuck on it what people really don't see from the outside uh it's not ugly <laughs> but it's it's just a building that is is combined to the other one and it's like lowered into the ground and will be hidden away uh, behind trees and stuff. So so people won't actually see it unless they're inside. Oh, yeah. okay. And that was the whole intention of it. I really actually uh, like that as well. And it seems to me like the kind of building that, you know, because the front is so very detailed and ornamental, um, that this is kind of a repurposed building almost. You have that front yeah. which starts off with a mm -hmm. sort of colonial atmosphere but then at the back of it you have the buildings which have been maybe added later on you know a zoo kind of grows organically exactly. um so this is where yeah. you have the actual habitats yeah i think that makes a lot of sense and mike came up with another awesome idea what is it called is it courtyard i forgot mm -hmm. the name oh it is a courtyard, courtyard. Mm -hmm. yeah so there will still be something in the middle section but i'm not quite sure how uh, big that will be okay uh but I, I just, I want to take my time for it. Like, it's such a big building and I could either <laughs> say I'm going to rush this all or, or I could just say, you know what, I'm going to make it in two episodes. So the next episode, what will be on my channel, we will really finish this all off. Cool. And then I, I will have some time to think about it. And maybe you guys, since you guys all will have the uh, Zoo 2 again. Uh, that you say, like, you maybe have a really cool idea too. So you're like, hey, you could do this or you could do that, or I don't know. So I will just keep it open for now and we just finish at least the Garial habitat and a little bit. Like, the building from the front is is completely finished on the only the green and stuff it still needs. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm really, really happy with the results so far but there's still a lot of work to do. I really like it. Yeah, I like the idea of having like a temporary building on either wing uh, and then just having the, the existing old architecture still in the center. I think that's Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that is at least the idea. So I really hope, because you, you shared some really cool pictures, I really hope I can 
get that vibe in there. So that's going to be challenging, but I'm also really excited for that. So yeah, there's still a lot of cool. awesome stuff to come up. <laughs> but I'm really happy that uh, definitely because it's the style is pretty hard for me from the building from the outside. And I think I tackled it pretty decent. You nailed it. So come on. But if I should drag this to the inside, to the interiors, well, you will see that with the exhibits. It's just really hard. I found interiors in general really hard. Mm. So it was just really good for me to just say, okay, and now it's my turn and this is my part <laughs> in this building. And I'm going to let go of that theme and just build something in there as if it's like built later on. Uh, so yeah, I, th I think I should do that more often in <laughs> Koali Zoo. But may I just add that I, I really I am a big fan of that building you, you just put onto it because of various things. You use the Arctic pieces there and I was like, mm -hmm. like when you put them down, I was a bit like, okay, do they work together? Because I, I remember the, the wood being quite quite different, you know, in terms of texture and stuff. But I have to say, like with the lighting in here, it, it gets this very personal vibe. Like it's something as as you haven't seen in Planet Zoo yet because it's such a different wall set and it casts the light so differently. I really like it. It gets almost like a little bit of a of a very um, high valuable um, wooden, very natural looking and it, it really fits that area. And I must say, I love... I was also really surprised how yeah, much it fits. Yeah, it does. It's really good. And I have to say, like, I love what you did with the roof that you have this open glass... Um, uh, opening mm. that you really have the light coming in because I was wondering when you sent the screenshots you had an angle where you couldn't really see the roof and I was like okay how did she mm. do that that the lighting oh. is so good like did she put like big I was waiting for the big ass um, lights there you know <laughs> these flood lights I was like okay you put them in <laughs> um, but I remember that the game doesn't cast light like this so I really love that and I already have such a such an idea we could work in here maybe um, because I wonder, maybe we could make like a fake mechanism that the roof would be open and you could open the roof. Mm -hmm. I was actually thinking about that, but I was like, I, I'm not sure if I have the pieces. Like there are just just a few pieces that you that are like loose glass pieces that you can drag in every angle. So I was like, yeah, well, forget about it. We just don't have the right pieces. If we would have got the pieces of a uh, planet coaster, like without anything around it, that it would be super easy. But I don't know. I don't feel it in Planet Zoo. But I had the exact same idea. Yeah, you, you could potentially do like some iron bars and stuff, and just pretend it was like a mechanism to open that. You know, frame some mm. of the pieces mm -hmm. so it almost looks like as if you could open them. That and would be really cool. Yeah, I didn't thought about that. I was gonna say all you need is a a pull hook and some sort of window that looks like it can like exactly, go yeah. up. So you would manually have to open them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I can look into that. I'm not sure if that's going to be this time, <laughs> but uh, probably then the next episode. But it's it's fine. Like I'm, uh, I'm really happy with how this one is uh, turning out. And I just, as I said, I don't want to rush it. Like there might be some tweaks and some changes again. But yeah, overall, I just I love in general just making underwater viewing galleries. Yeah. <laughs> so that is <laughs> something I I just really love to do uh, that's a classic yeah i just really it's it's satisfying to the least totally yeah mm. it's just different from a habitat that is just like a blooming platform i don't know it just has some really nice vibes to it with the water i have and to say glass. one thing more you i really like how you did that and this is especially the the way you you made the water i saw you doing like the, the terraforming at the beginning to make this the the entrance to the entryway into the water very shallow like smoothing it out to the very end uh, i had but a struggle with good. that like, i had this struggle lately as well and i couldn't really get it to what i wanted to look like but it, now you you nailed it it's like very shallow and they also it's good for the animations to be fair but <laughs> uh, well, it's actually not as shallow as i wanted it to be like i only had the, the choice between two two water levels and i wanted mm -hmm. it to be in the middle but <laughs> I didn't add a middle. So it was either super shallow, which was just way too shallow, or this. Uh, there, there was just no other thing to do. So I really wish it was lower, to be honest. But yeah, I have to just do sometimes what the game gives True, me yeah. <laughs> instead of struggle and pain. But yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm happy with it and I'm, uh, I'm glad you liked it. I was afraid, like you talked about that glass roof. 
I was a little bit afraid. I had this in mind. I, I mostly get ideas when I'm in the shower. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did the same. I kind of. So relate. at least we're all very clean. And uh, and I was like, oh, I wonder how that will that will look like with the orange bricks and then glass in the middle. I was like, oh my god, I just don't know what else to do with a roof if that would not fit because then it will be a completely different building, right? But I'm really happy that it, it pretty much works. I might have to work around the edges a little bit to make it look better, but I have no idea yet how I should do that. But uh, those are like the small little details. As I said, that building will, no one will see that part of the building from the outside probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's so. something honestly that I like about this build as well is that it seems very much designed from the inside out and really just to provide the best sort of habitat for the gharials and the best viewing platform for the guests. Yeah. Um, and it kind of looks, uh, you know, don't want to say it too bluntly, but hey, that's me, <laughs> I guess. It kind of looks a bit ugly from the outside, but realistically, that's kind of what you want to <laughs> yeah. have for this sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and from the inside, it looks really cool. Um, so I think that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, and I think uh, once once we just put down a lot of trees and bushes in front, no one knows that that building is that big. Hmm. Like, I am always surprised when I look at Google Maps and I see like zoos from the top, there are so many ugly buildings <laughs> that you have no idea from when you walk around in a zoo. Then then you're just like, oh, what a pretty zoo. But like everything is, is, is pretty from where the guests can see it and everything that isn't in a guest viewing point, I feel is just like Utilitarian, functional yeah. and that's it. Yeah. That, and that's all they do. And we're back in the game of yeah, Planet right. Coaster. It's, it's kind of a theme park at the end of the day. So, Pretty much, yeah. yeah. That's what you want to achieve? Yeah, that's 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 definitely true. But I I don't think uh, in terms of realism, I really I, I I did already a lot more research than I did in the three years I played Planet Coaster. <laughs> <laughs> like I I didn't had that at all with Planet Coaster because that was just like oh yeah I I love fantasy I love Disneyland and uh, everything was fairy tale and I. I didn't really look up that many things uh, for a reference. Or I guess the difference. Maybe only for parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the difference is that you have fantasy theme parks, but fantasy zoos aren't really a thing because at the end of the day, it's really just about real life uh, things. So. Uh, you skipped a bit. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't hear. Yeah, sorry. Probably people can't hear it, but we are calling in Discord and. <laughs> You sound like a robot, but you're also <laughs> recording your own voice, so this yeah. is gonna be funny. Can you explain again, Sil? Belgian <laughs> internet connection for me isn't the greatest, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, I was just talking about how. Uh, what was I talking about, actually? That's a that's a good. I point. don't know. I don't know actually. Um, <laughs> Something about theme parks I, and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. like theme parks, you often have a fantasy theme, uh, whereas zoos are much more focused on you know representing real life nature and flora and fauna yeah so, and continents yeah, yeah. The, the whole sort of fantas the, the whole fantastical concept doesn't really come back in as in it as much no so you're you're kind of well, almost forced to do uh, to whether go to a zoo and do some research there or like like look at buildings or in the google images because for some animals, it's like so hard to think like, oh yeah, what am I going to do next? Because it's just so different than, oh yeah, I'm going to theme something in fairy tale or I'm going to theme something in this. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know, it feels so different, but it's all also a mm, lot of fun. I have to admit, um, I didn't know that either, but people commented under my, my videos of these uh, movie related habitats that um, some kind of zoos or like many zoos actually start to do this kind of thing. They, they start to uh, embed that into the planning of the habitat. So they, they sent me some, some cool stuff over where actually they try to uh, do this because actually the animals don't really notice. Like they don't really care as long as it's kind of a good habitat for them. They don't care if they have like a mm. cave yeah. or if it's a kind of a fairy tale castle, if you will, you know, but the, the guests do care mm -hmm. and it improves the experience for the guests. So I was like, you know, I was like putting out my habitat out of the Yosemite Zoo because I was like, hey, it's not realistic. And they came like, hey, but zoos are doing it. And if you give us the budget we would do it so actually zookeepers themselves wrote me like hey we would do it we just had don't have the money which is also a valid point though it's yeah also the money you know because at the end of the day yeah, right. they are most likely non-profit so that's definitely yeah. mostly the issue 
Yeah, which is kind of sad, but in the end, I think the most important thing for a zoo is just to take good care for the animals, and uh, that's mostly there is. Like, that that's the most important thing for them. So if they have money, if they earn money, everything goes totally, to the animals. Totally fine. And, I mean, that's, well, that's what yeah, they should do. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. Ooh. God, I, I didn't believe that we Dang. would manage to keep talking oh, you for did this pretty long. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we did. That's amazing. So I was actually transfixed with that building. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll> be honest. <laughs> I'm not really sure if uh, there will be a lot more of speed builds coming up, and else I will just fill it up with some cinematic shots, obviously. But yeah, the end is near. Well, it is the end. It is the end. <laughs> of my episode. <laughs> <laughs> and, so poetic. Um, wow. Uh, so, so, so just in short, uh, like I said in the beginning of this video, the playlist with all the videos of Koali Sue is in the description, of course, but please do give a follow to Silverad, Rudy Rankamo, and my cheats, and definitely Rudy Rankamo because he is coming oh up next to mm -hmm. this Koali Zoo series. And the videos of Mike Sheets and Silver Red are already in the playlist. So definitely go and check it out because Mike Sheets built an amazing micro house. And Silver Red, we, we dumped Silver Red with the entrance, which is <laughs> stunning. But we are really happy that we didn't have to do it. But it's really stunning. So definitely just go, go and check out those videos of those guys. Don't forget to subscribe to me, of course, if you haven't already. And yeah, I'm just gonna leave it. May I thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah, Hi, sure. Again. Of course. Thanks for having us. <laughs> it's really a lot of fun to uh, do this collaboration with you guys, and I'm really looking forward to all the rest that is coming up with Koali Zoo. It's going to be really exciting times. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, before I forget, Christmas is between my episode oh, and Rudy mm -hmm. Rankemel. So I want to wish everyone a Merry, Merry Christmas. Enjoy the holidays with your family and your friends. I don't know if you guys want to say anything else to be people. Feliz Navidad. Frohe Weihnachten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Do we want to do another <laughs> animal poll or something? <laughs> what should be in the other other tank? Well, uh, Rudy already knows exactly what he wants to do, so I okay. think it's gonna be fine. Oh yeah, fine. well yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm under pressure now. I'm like rounding off this this first round of you. Mm. You're gonna be really. <laughs> fine. Who knows? I have some, <laughs> some heavy meals in in my stomach when I start building, so please take that into account. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it's Christmas. Is time. that a German <laughs> saying? <laughs> oh, Actually, yeah, well, okay. No, uh, that may, maybe that doesn't translate too well into English. I figure. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's Christmas time, and I potentially will be eating a bit more than usually, as everyone does. So, um, yeah. <laughs> It's a lot more literal than I thought it was. <laughs> I'm trying to find metaphorical meaning. I'm like, I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anyways, guys, have a great holidays. And we just really hope to see you guys after Christmas. Well fed. And, uh, well, thanks, guys, for watching. And don't yes. forget to leave a like, of course. Bye. Bye, guys. Keep yourselves well fed. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> Is that is that really a German saying? Is that what this is? <laughs> wow. <laughs>